So in the last video, we were looking at how to work with optimization. Remember, when you optimize something, you're trying to minimize or maximize something. So the first step was to write an equation for what you're looking to optimize. And after that, then you're supposed to, well, so this is something like this, for example. And then, because um, when you want to optimize something, you want to find out what it's, where is it a maximum or a minimum? And the key thing then that we used in steps two and three was to say, well, if we want to find if it's a max or a min, then we have to first of all use this idea that at a maximum or a minimum, the derivative is zero because it's at the top. You know, like a tangent line here would be flat. It would be uh, like this with a slope of zero. If it was a minimum, let's say the graph went like this or here, and this point right here was at a minimum, again, the same thing would happen. And that's why we need to first of all find where the derivative is zero and then check that it really is a max or a min. And in our example, we have uh, this. So we're trying to minimize the length of fence needed. And we had a fixed area. So step one was to find an equation for what you're looking to minimize. And we did that. We wrote an equation for what we're looking to minimize, which was the length. But it was in two variables, so we had to use the fact that the area is a thousand. And that helped us to get it in only one variable. So that means then we're ready for step two. Remember, step two then is to find where the derivative is zero. So if the equation for L, it was 2x plus 1,000 over x, wasn't it? Let me just double check here. Yeah, so 2x plus 1,000 over x. So that's what I'm starting with. My goal then is to find out, you know, I want to find out when is the derivative zero. So that means I'm going to have to find the derivative. But before I do that, I think it really helps to make this more calculus friendly. So what I'm going to do then is rewrite L like this. So this 2x can stay there, but this over x, that makes it look complicated. I might need to use a product rule, but it turns out if I just wrote it as a negative exponent, it turns out x to the minus 1 is the same thing as 1 over x. So because of that, although this may look ugly, it's more calculus friendly, because now I can write L prime. L prime, the derivative, is going to be, again, we're going to use this little property here again that you know, if we're looking at something that x to the power of n, the derivative will be n times x to the power of n minus 1. We're going to use this property here. So it's like a little 1 here, so the 1 times 2 becomes just a 2, times x to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 0. x to the 0 is just 1. So that means it just becomes 2 plus, actually not even a plus. This thing right here is the same thing. Negative 1 times 1,000 is negative 1,000 times x to the power of negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. Now this is done, but maybe now I'll write it back in a form that looks a little bit nicer to look at. So I'll rewrite it as just 2 minus 1,000 over x squared. That's the same thing as x to the minus 2. Same thing as 1 over x squared. Well, great. Here I go. I'm ready. Now what I need to do is find out when does that equal 0. So 0 equals 2 minus 1,000 over x squared. Because remember, the whole goal is to find out when the derivative is 0, because that's when it's maximized or minimized. So when the derivative is 0, I just set that L equal to 0, sorry, L primed. I set that equal to 0, and then I just solve for x. So maybe I can move this over to the left so I can make it uh, 1,000 over x squared, that's going to equal 2, just to make things positive here. And I want to move my x squared to the top, I can move this one down, so I can say uh, 1000 over 2, that's 500 equals x squared. I skipped a little bit of algebra here, but hopefully you're okay with that. But anyway, no matter what you do, you should be able to get to this step. Now when you want to get x on its own, well you take the square root. So x is technically plus or minus the square root of 500. It's always a plus or minus, because a negative number squared still gives you the same thing as a positive number squared. But it doesn't really make sense to have a negative x, because you can't really have a negative length. So now we've found the value here that we need to check here. We need to check x is plus 500, uh, square root of 500. So we'll say that. So x, um, well, we can actually estimate it, because maybe we want to do that on our calculator here. So I've just done that a second ago here. So just to show you what I did, it's square root of 500 is approximately 22 point, let's say 22.4. So 
So I, can, I mean, it's not exactly, it's exactly square root of 500, but it's approximately, I'll put a little dot on the top here to tell us it's not exactly, it's about 22.4 meters. Now the thing is though, we have to do step three, which is to check, is it a max or a min? Now we have to make sure that it's correct. So what we can do then is do a sine diagram. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do a sine diagram I could have done this with the um, other method by using the second derivative, but I'm gonna to choose to use a sine diagram instead. So sine diagram, I'm gonna be working with just a derivative, and I'm going to be looking at, uh, well, maybe I'll actually move this line here a little bit. I need a little bit more space here. And what I'm gonna do is maybe write this in, yeah, I'll do it in blue. So I'm looking at this point, um, x is square root of 500. That's really what I'm looking at here. That's what I want. This is, let's say, zero. So this is a dotted line. I'm trying to look to left or to the right of this to see what's what. So uh, maybe it helps to have an equation written again for my derivative. My derivative is uh, right over here. It's 2 minus 1,000 over x squared. So if I want something less than uh, square root of 500, I don't know, I can make it, let's say, 1. Let's just say I pretend that it was 1. That's an easy number to look at. Let's say I made x1. 1 squared is just 1. 1,000 over 1 is just 1,000. So 2 minus 1,000 will be some negative number. And that's all I care is that the derivative, whoops, I said negative and I wrote positive. That was silly. So it's some negative number. And to the right of it, let's see what happens then. What if I make this, I don't know, um, 100, let's say. If I made this value right here 100, well 100 squared is 10,000. And 1,000 over 10,000 is some small decimal. And 2 minus some small number is going to be still a positive number. So this is a way to just see then the derivative then will be, well, negative over here. So that means it's decreasing to the left of this point, and it's increasing to the right. So something that's decreasing might look like this. Something that's increasing might look like this. Therefore, this thing is a minimum. So I can say that therefore x equals approximately 22.4 meters is a minimum. Is that what we wanted? Let's go back and double check. We wanted to minimize our costs, therefore we want to minimize the length. So we have indeed found the value that we were looking for here. We found exactly what we wanted here. We found this value right here. So then maybe let's uh, take a look at it and use it. So what we can do then is if x equals 22.4 is a minimum, maybe I need to know y. Now the equation for y went like this. We actually did it over here. We actually used it. We said y was 1000 over x. Therefore, y is going to be 1000 over the square root of 500. That's the exact value. Let's maybe write it down the approximation here. So do that, we can say um, 1,000 over the square root of 500. Close the bracket. Oops. I actually didn't want that. I want to delete this and go to the right. Go to the right. Just to absolutely make sure I've done this right. There we go, so we get about 44.7. So then I can say that y is then approximately 44.7 meters. Therefore, we can say this, so this is our final answer then. x equals 22.4 meters and y equals 44.7 meters will minimize. Oops, I didn't spell it right today will minimize um, the length of fence and therefore the cost. So that is what we really needed to do here. So therefore the costs. That's sort of our final answer. Those are the dimensions that would actually work best. So that means then, if we go back to the original example here, so 22.4, if I made this value 22.4, I made this value 44.7, turns out this would still give us, well remember I'm approximating here, 
Because right? if you multiply, then you won't get exactly 1,000 because I've estimated here. But if you made this square root of 500 and you made this 1,000 over square root of 500, it'll work out precisely. And if you do that, you'll end up with an area of 1,000 meters squared. And this is the one that gives you the least length needed. So this is the best you could do. Now we could always take a look at that graph because maybe you were tempted to take a look at this graph here and see what shape it has. So maybe let's take a look at that now. Let's see here. So what I want to do here is actually put in the equation for the length here, the original length. So length was 2x plus 1,000 over x. I'm going to try to take a look at that here. So 2 x plus. Now what I can do is a neat little form here. I can actually do, I think it's alpha, this one here. I can actually have it looking like a nice pretty fraction here. 1,000, ooh, doesn't that look nice? Over 1,000, uh, over x. So 2x plus 1,000 over x, and I press graph. And here's the problem. It just looks like this. What I need to do then is take a look at my window and make sure I'm at the right, uh, looking at the right place here. Now what I could do is, I mean, I know that I have to make this a little bit wider. And maybe I want to actually make this thing here a little bit further. And it turns out if you mess around with it a little bit and you make this, um, I think, negative 400 worked really nice. And 400. I think I remember it was something like this. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. That looks really nice. So this is what it looks like here. It goes like, kind of, and then over here like this. So this is actually what we call, a, I mean, this is an oblique asymptote, but we don't have to worry about that. Um, this one right here, then we can see, so it goes something like this, something like this. Now remember, we said that x had to be positive, so we can pretty much ignore this. That means we were just finding this value right here of the length. So see that that right there, that value was 22.4. That's what this x value was here. So just so you can see at least that you can actually look at it with a graph. If you're allowed a calculator, you could have easily just done this and asked your calculator for the minimum. That's how we can deal with optimization questions.